Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today we're going to talk about the top 10 perfumes for summer. Summer is a very fascinating season. It can be super hot, but it can also be cold depending which part of the world you're in, northern or southern hemisphere. Australia's summer is America's winter, northern American's winter, and vice versa. Really complicated. So I've made a selection of fragrances that are suited for really hot summer, but also cooler weather as well. First, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and you can also join me on Patreon, Super Jacob, all spelled together for extra perks. Thanks to my patrons who have pledged. Let's get straight to it. The first one is a floral accord, and I adore it, okay? I live for this one in summer, particularly at night, and particularly for those very, very, very hot nights where you feel like you can't really put any clothes on or any sheets on and you're just... Maybe you have a very, very thin layer of a little cotton something something or linen. Just, you know. But it's a very sexy time. That would be none other than... Carnal Flower by Dominique Ropion uh, from the Frédéric Mal fragrance collection. This is a tuberose masterpiece. Dominique Ropion knows his florals. This is beautiful in summer. And, you know, tuberose, the, there's this melanie accord there as well, like a coconutty melanie accord, which makes it also green in a different way than you would be used to smelling a tuberose, because a tuberose has green facets to it as well, obviously. But this one, as it dries down and goes on for hours and hours and hours on my skin, I mean, I use it very sparingly because this thing is a bomb on my skin. I smell it the next day on me as well. And the longer it stays on the skin and the more alluring it becomes and hot it becomes, it's just so beautiful, just like the tuberose itself. There's a reason why they didn't let virgin smell tuberoses in the olden days when they were in bloom. Google it if you don't know what happens. <laughs> Beautiful in summer, really. This is a summer perfume. In winter, it almost turns a little bit like indolic tuberosi, meaning like camphorous. It gets that camphorous accord when it's really cold outside. But when it's really hot outside, it just blooms on the skin. Really beautiful in summer, especially at night. Also really great for special occasions with that somebody special you want to spend some time with. The next one is kind of the opposite of that in terms of, no, it's still very sensual uh, if you want to spend some time with the person you love or, you know, whatever. Walk of shame the next morning. But opposite in terms of this one is good also for colder weather, not just for hot weather, for those cooler nights in summer. Or if you are very daring, I would particularly recommend this one at the seaside on a sandy beach. This is a gorgeous one for summer whether it be Northern or Southern Hemisphere. Obsession for women. You know, for me, perfume is not no gender. I just say obsession for women because Calvin Klein also released Obsession for Men. But this amber is beautiful. It is powdery enough to keep you dry in summer, to make you feel dry in summer, not too sweaty and wet. But it is also warm enough to keep you super, super warm and tingly inside in winter. It's really, really, really interesting. Actually, you know what? Let's just go for it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so inviting, alluring. It smells of sand and sun and honeyed. Uh, sunsets. But it also smells of a warm embrace and hug and knitwear in, in colder months. It's really, really, really that gorgeous. Very Calvin Klein. Think Calvin Klein ad campaigns, late 80s. That's the vibe. Very Americana, but very clean and somber. But also sensual at the same time. It's a paradox, really. It's like contradiction in its own terms. So the next one is very sunny, happy, joyous, Again, a white floral. Of course, they're the best in summer. White florals are always the best in summer. And that would be an 80s masterpiece from the early 80s, 1981, to be precise. Giorgio Beverly Hills. This is a masterpiece. Oh, boy. Oh, the gardenia in here. Mm -mm. 
Hmm. It is a sunset, it's a sunrise, it's Venice Beach, it's a Corvette, white Corvette, it's shoulder pads, bleached hair flowing behind you while you're like kind of twirled in a silk white scarf, it's huge black sunglasses. Ah, oh, man, it's the 80s. It's happiness and everything is possible. You know, this is kind of joy and positivity gorgeous for summer it just makes you feel alive you know Giorgio Beverly Hills coincidentally also one of my mom's favorite perfumes the next one is complicated not everybody likes it not so easy to love because it is a very conceptual um, it is also very heavy and cloying if you don't know how to use it right and I always tell people how to use it right and I'm going to tell you now as well this one is particularly good in summer but also in colder months because it is that heavy but I prefer it in summer because in summer it blooms. And that would be Eden by Cacharel. Uh, Eden by Cacharel is so heavy on the tuberose, but also on the patchouli and it's cloying and these almost rotting fruits in this garden of Eden where Adam and Eve are alone, but there's like so much food everywhere. So many fruits, they're overripe almost. And and if you spray it here on the neck, it's too close to your nose. You're going to really, it's going to be too much for you. My trick is always in the height of summer when it's super hot, spray it behind the knee. And I actually have shorts on right now because it's summer right now. So I'm going to spray it behind the knee. And then it takes a minute. Oh, man. Mm. It kind of slithers up the body and it, it needs that time, that distance from the knee to the nose to blossom properly. And then it is just majestic. Majestic. If you know how to use this one, it's so beautiful. Very conceptual because it's also quite a synthetic perfume. This is a fragrance from the 90s by Guisha for uh, Cacharel. And uh, it is uh, definitely a fragrance that smells of that time, of that particular synthetic time. So it is a blast from the past, but in the best of ways. But it also has futurism in it. And it makes you feel like you are in a weird garden with magical futuristic flowers from the future. So it is a blast from the past, but it is also a vision of the future at the same time. It's great in summer. It gives you great vibes, makes you feel like creative you know how in summer sometimes you tend to be a little bit more lazy because it's too hot and you move slower and you just do less of everything and you slow down this allows your mind to to wander instead of slowing down with the mind this one kind of helps me speed up the thought process and the mind a very creative fragrance the next one is for those passionate moments in summer and also in winter here's another one that is really good for the opposites um this is an, an, an aldehydic bomb, uh, amber, aldehyde, sandalwood, uh, tagetes or tagetes, uh, marigold, uh, lily of the valley, roses, oh, patchouli is in there as well. It's a masterpiece. Dolce Gabbana's red cap. This is the OG, made in Italy, Euro Italia, first formula magic magic in a bottle this is what i always envision anna magnani smelling of uh, nanarella from rome my favorite actress of all time unfortunately no longer with us but her movies still are thankfully this is uh in summer it turns highly floral and powdery dry sensual in winter the patchouli is more pr pronounced it, it turns more wet and humid it, it kind of uh becomes more um, yeah humid it's, it's a more humid version of it in winter and in summer it's a beautiful aldehyde soapy dry accord so it makes you feel super fresh and clean in summer but it makes you also feel very sensual in winter so this is a great one the next one is another white floral. And again, Dominique Ropion, the same guy who did Carnal Flower, he collaborated on this one here for Dior. This is Pure Poison 
the gardenia bomb, white floral, musky accord. This is the original formula uh, from the early 2000s. This is the Y2K era perfume. This one is from 2004 when it was released. It aged beautifully. The bottle is insanely beautiful. Uh, they don't do this bottle like this anymore. It used to have this pearlescent finish. So you could kind of see inside the bottle as if it were a, a strange pearl with the white, with this see, pearlescent white and then pearl stopper or lid a cap and then a dark dark purple sprayer it's a synthetic very y2k fragrance so you can imagine also wearing a y2k outfit early 2000s clothes and styling together with this perfume they go so well hand in hand um, it is a warm fragrance because of the musks uh, so what happens is it gives you that sensation of florals and they bloom beautifully in the heat. They don't bloom that much in winter. You can wear this also in autumn and winter, but in summer in particular, this one goes into that extra realm of the musks start melting in the heat. They're preserved in winter. And so they have a whole other quality. They're more crystalline. They're more icy in winter, but in summer they melt in the heat. And so the white florals in here mesh with the muskiness of it. Synthetic, yes, but very experimental, modern and new. And they mesh together in, in this ambrosial, delicious white florals drenched in melting musks. It is really beautiful, moody, in just the right way. This is the type of perfume you wear when you're in late afternoon or early evening. Either you're doing your, you know, aperitivo before dinner or you're doing a cocktail and then you wear this. Oof. It, it just, it hits the spot just right in summer. Um, the next one is kind of a surprise to me. I surprised myself when I was compiling my list and I thought, oh my gosh, this works really well right now. And so for the first time ever, this is entering my top, the top 10 summer list. Usually I envision this in icy temperatures and in icy climates, uh, snow everywhere, all nature dormant. And, and yet now in the heat, I sprayed it on and I was like, wow, okay, this hits in a very different way this year. Uh, so obsessed with Comme des Garçons Zagorsk from the incense series so this is an incense oh, man it just has such a soft incensey carrot quality to it almost like a carrot cake doesn't really have a smell but it's not sweet don't get me wrong it's a dry incense but it's juicy in summer. It really has a juicy quality. It's like a juice incense. Really, really, really beautiful. Yeah, it hits the spot. It's in, it's incredible. It almost has a... Mm. It's, it, you know, there's a dryness to it that really works well in summer because it, it goes into that um, clove, very heavy clove accord. So a clove is very drying and soothing and summery in itself. And in summer, it kind of blasts in the heat, that clove. And it smells very, 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 very clean and very well put together. Uh, somber, but at the same time, soft and powdery, very tactile. It's a very tactile perfume that doesn't leave you sticky. You know, in the summer, you tend to sweat and everything is sticky. You don't want to touch each other because everything is sticky. But this one kind of invites you to touch and smell. But despite the touch, it keeps you dry. It's like a really helpful perfume for summer. It's gore gorgeous. Gorgeous. And I am so surprised that I've rediscovered this one for summer because I'm I always talk about this as a winter fragrance. It's great in winter. But boy, oh boy, does it hit the spot this summer for me. Comme des Garçons, Incense Series 3, Zagorsk, the incense fragrance. Um, number eight, 
is a classic for summer, I think. Unfortunately, they've reformulated this one, so if you can hunt down the original formula from two years ago, highly recommend, or one year ago, no, I think two years ago now, time really flies, but uh, it's a relatively new one still, considering that it's only two years old. Uh, Guerlain's Nettare di Sole, or Sun Nectar, in Italian, from the Aqua Allegoria, or Allegoria collection. So, unfortunately, reformulated that new formula I do not like. But the old formula, this is insane. Very experimental. Gorgeous. It starts off very mineral aquatic. Like a very synthetic modern-day mineral aquatic note. But then, once that dissipates, it goes down into honey. But it's not, you know, honey can sometimes smell a little bit dirty. This honey is very clean, powdery, soft, intense in the best of ways. Uh, keeps you dry, keeps you cool. And then you get bursts of all sorts of flowers. And these flowers are very much uh, wild flowers from the fields of summer vacations. Not at the ocean or at the seaside. This is more in the mountains uh, or in valleys or uh, outside of cities and little villages, uh, not close to the water, but they are very much these beautiful fields and camps of summer flowers with bees flying all around, collecting uh, the nectar and, um, you know, preparing for honey. It's just that beautiful. It really is that beautiful. And I think it's a travesty that Guerlain reformulated it. I think this had too much character for their Aqua Allegoria range. So they kind of toned it down, mellowed it down, streamlined it, turned it into something bleh. Because truth be told, the way that they formulated this one, um, it's more than an Aqua Allegoria perfume. Like this should have been a standalone, per it should have gotten its own release. It's that beautiful. And in summer, it just makes you dream of poems in the fields, running through fresh grass while flowers all around you, bumblebees humming on, on your sides. Everything is just gorgeous. Just nature in summer in a bottle, literally. Beautiful. Number nine is uh, another white floral, and it is, again, gardenia-based. There's, there's a lot of gardenia and tuberose in this collection, obviously, because in summer, I mean, white florals are the way to go. Also, a ton of jasmine, and most of these perfumes that I've listed today have jasmine as well. But jasmine is kind of a given in summer and in winter. However, we have an aldehyde perfume from the past with a gardenia, Yagestet. It's Chanel Gardenia, the Eau de Parfum. I adore this one. Of course, you can also do the Eau de Toilette. You can do the Parfum, whichever one you like more. Oh, man. I cannot tell you how much I love this perfume and how crazy I am for this perfume. In fact, I say this often and people are always shocked, but I'm going to repeat it here. When I wear this one, I love to push it to the limit till I smell out the poisonous green note of a gardenia flower. So this is kind of coconutty, right? And um, aldehydic. But it is soothing and soft and smooth when you just spray it once or twice. And it doesn't last long on the skin. But if you overspray it, and I don't recommend doing it, I'm just telling you what I do personally for me. And like everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only. Everything is just my opinion, not rooted in any truths or facts. Everything's alleged. So for me, this perfume tickles out the poisonous green accord of the gardenia flower. Because if you've ever had the gardenia flower in your home, it's a delicate flower. It doesn't like gushes of wind. It can perish easily if that happens. So you got to keep it safe without too much wind running through. But if you don't have air filtering through the house, the gardenia is going to fill the entire room. It's going to intoxicate you. It's that intense of a smell. And it has like a green poisonous accord in it. It smells very green poisony. And you get that, or I get that out of gardenia, the perfume from Chanel in the Eau de Parfum concentration, when I overspray it. 30 sprays. I go there with this one. 
Like one, two, three, four, five, 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 I go everywhere. And once I reach those 30 spritzes, the doors of this Eden open up and I'm like, I'm in heaven. I'm in Gardenia heaven. And then it hits the spot for me, especially in summer. It is just beyond divine. I adore this one. It's It was created by Ernest Beau in the 20s. Sure, it went to a ton of reformulations, but still in its current state, it's a masterpiece. And the last one is... This year, this summer, thus far, has been my biggest obsession uh, as a fragrance. And I've, oh gosh, I've been talking for a long time now, so it's hard for me to do. Oh, oh, oh. Is that how Shelley Duval talks as olive oil in Robert Altman's Popeye? With Robin Williams as Popeye? Oh, oh. It's olive oil, you guys. Cheap and Chic by Moschino. What a masterpiece of a fragrance made by Euro Italia in Italy. Olive, this is olive oil's kind of silhouette. This, a lot of people think, is a nose. This is not a nose. This is olive oil's chignon. It's the thing in the back of her head, this little thing here like, that I have in honor of olive oil. So it's the chignon, this little part here that olive oil has, that's this. And then this is her hair from the back. And then in the front is her face. We don't see her face, obviously. It's very stylized, the stylized version of olive oil. And her collar is a heart. The bottle is adorable. And then it's kind of in a swing to the side because she's walking and it's her skirt that kind of just lifts up as she is walking. So technically, you're supposed to hold it like this. Now, this perfume has a very rare ingredient in it that uh, is my favorite flower. That would be the cyclamen. I used to collect wild cyclamens with my grandma when she was alive. Uh, a cyclamen is a flower that, wild cyclamen is a flower that blooms beginning of autumn in reality. So it's kind of a September, October type of uh, flower. And the wild cyclamens are very small, little pink flowers, and they are so scented. They smell amazing, and they grow in batches. So you kind of, when you discover them somewhere in the forest, there's going to be a ton of them all next to each other, and they're going to be so beautifully, delicately pink, darker pink in the center, and then they kind of fade into this gorgeous light pink on the outside. And very few perfumes uh, have a cyclamen accord. This one does. Not many people like cyclamen in perfume form because it's a very synthetic version of a cyclamen. I think similar like with gardenia, you can't really synthesize the gardenia flower. You have to create a fake version of it to smell of gardenia, similar with cyclamen, I believe. It's a very intense smell. And uh, this one also has a ton of musks. Uh, the first formulation of this one also had... Uh, Oak moss, I think ambergris might be floating in there as well. But it is a flower floral accord with a lot of violets, with a lot of cyclamen. Um, it's sparkling in the opening notes, so it has an aldehydic accord. It's a perfume from the 90s, 1995. So this one was in the works already while Franco Moschino was still alive, I do believe. And then as he passed away, the perfume was released. Man, this is a masterpiece. I've been wearing this every day uh, for a long time now. It's really kind of, it hits the spot for me. It's not easy to always pull off. You got to dose it, right? Especially that citrus in the opening notes with the aldehydes, it cuts. It's very, it's almost peppery. Uh, so a lot of people don't like the opening notes. It's kind of acidy, peppery, citrusy. But then as it calms down, it becomes more powdery, cool, and then the cyclamen with the violet kicks in, and then the ambery, musky accord joins the concoction. Oh, interesting. Mixed with obsession a little bit. Oh. It's, it's just perfect. And it keeps you fresh and cool during summer. It, it keeps you happy. The bottle is happiness in a bottle. And really, the perfume is as well. Still in its current reformulated state. I adore it. A lot of people complain and say, you know, they like the first iteration of it, that it was deeper, more sophisticated, more special. Yes, sh 
sure the 90s version of Cheap and Chic had a deeper quality to it, but it's still gorgeous in its current state. And don't forget, Euro Italia is still making it, you know, uh, so they know what they're doing. I trust them. And I, I love it. I love it. I still love it today. I wish they would go back to the old cheap and chic style that handwritten, like Franco Moschino handwriting, cheap and chic, instead of this kind of spelled out version, you know, like this kind of technical font. <laughs> but it is what it is. I'm, I'm so glad that they still make this perfume because, you know, they could have discontinued it, but they didn't. And the fact that it's still there with us makes me very, very, very happy. And it makes me feel like everything's going to be okay. And isn't that what summer is all about? So thank you guys so much for watching. These have been my top 10 perfumes for summer. I hope you've liked my selection. And let me know your top 10 in the comment section down below. And if you liked these as well, or if you would exchange them for something else. Until next time, subscribe, thumb up this video if you liked it, and never give up on love. Bye.